This is part two in our series of lectures on section 2.2 on set operations. And in this video, we're just simply going to prove um, the following theorem about sets. The theorem says that if A and B are any two sets, then A is a subset of B if and only if A intersect B is equal to A. So that's a biconditional statement. In order to prove it, you have to do two things. You have to show, first of all, that if A is a subset of B, then A intersect B is equal to A. And once you're finished doing that, you have to show that if A intersect B is equal to A, then A must be a subset of B. Okay, you have to do both. And in order to do this, I want you to use just simply working definitions of subset, of equality of sets, and of intersection of two sets. So you've got to use all those working definitions in order to do it, and nothing more. But probably before we begin to write the proof, maybe we should draw some pictures to convince ourselves that it should be true. Okay, so we're trying to convince ourselves that A is a subset of B, if and only if uh, A intersected with B is equal to A. So let's say, first of all, that A is a subset of B. Okay, so that means that the picture looks like this. Uh, the set defining A has to lie inside the set defining B, and if that's the case, well then when you take the intersection of A with B, if you intersect this set with this set, you just get back A. And so that certainly seems to imply that A intersect B is equal to A. Okay, so that's one direction. We believe it. For the other direction, um, so in the other direction we're assuming that A intersected with B is equal to A. So that sort of forces our hand when we're trying to draw the picture. So that kind of implies that when we draw A, if you were to intersect that with B, this is telling you, so normally when you take an intersection, you get a little bit less than what you started with, right? If B looked anything like this, then when you intersect, you're going to miss a bunch of stuff over there. But this is telling you, you don't miss anything. And therefore, B can't have any less than all of the stuff in A. So it's got to have at least as much. Otherwise, when you took the intersection, you would get less than A. And that picture seems to imply that A is a subset of B. Okay, so th the pictures don't really help us to prove anything, but they help us convince ourselves that the theorem should be true. So let's get back to actually writing a proof of it. So I'm going to leave it for you to do. Um, it might take you a few minutes to write both directions of the proof. So give it a try. Do a nice job and when you come back you can compare your answer to mine to see if it's done in the correct way. Okay, here's my proof, and you'll notice that in my write-up I'm using this device of putting a, a right-hand arrow for the direction in which I'm showing that this implies this, and I'm using the left-hand arrow to indicate when I'm proving this implies this. So remember, you have to have an arrow for each direction um, because it's a biconditional statement that you're trying to prove. Now make sure when you're writing your proof that it's absolutely crystal clear what it is you're assuming and what it is you're trying to prove. Okay, so now let's begin. Um, so in this direction, I'm assuming this is true and I want to prove this is true. I want to deduce that this is true. And so I start by saying, suppose that A is a subset of B. Now I warn the reader that we must prove that A intersect B is equal to A. Now what does that mean? That's an equality of two sets. How do you prove the two sets are equal? 
you have to prove two things. You have to prove that this is a subset of this, and you have to prove this is a subset of this. So I warn the reader that that's what I'm going to do. So for this purpose, we will first prove that A intersect B is a subset of A, and then prove that A is a subset of A intersected with B. Okay, so now I launch into it. I'm going to prove this. How do you prove that this set is a subset of this set? You have to show that a generic element of this set is also an element of this set. So you say, let x be an element of this set. And I have to prove that it's also an element of A. Well, if x is an element of this set, then by definition it's an intersection. That means it's in A and it's in B. Now the only important one of those two is that it's in A. So since it's in A, we have proven that this is a subset of this. So notice that direction of the proof, proving that this is a subset of this, didn't make any use of the hypothesis. In fact, it's always true that an intersection of two sets is a subset of either one of the two sets. So that's always true. But to show the reverse inclusion, by the way, the term inclusion uh, is referring to a situation where one set is a subset of another set. So this is referred to as an inclusion. To show the reverse inclusion, which is to say to show that A is a subset of A intersected with B, now you see that's not typically true. Uh, but So we'll have to make use of the hypothesis in order to prove that. So to show the reverse inclusion, suppose that Y is an element of A. I'm going to have to prove that that Y is also an element of A intersected with B. So since A is a subset of B, it follows that Y is also an element of B. Thus Y is in both A and B, so Y is in the intersection. So I've shown that if I take a generic Y in A, that it's also in A intersected with B. And therefore, I've shown that A is a subset of A intersected with B. We've thus proven that A intersect B equals A, completing this direction of the proof. Okay, now for the reverse direction, we say, suppose this happens, and then we're going to have to deduce that this happens. So, suppose A intersected B is equal to A. We must prove that A is a subset of B. Well, how can you prove that A is a subset of B? Well, you have to give yourself a generic element of A and prove that it's in B. So let X be in A. Since A is equal to the intersection of A with B, it follows that it's also in this set. It follows that X is in the intersection. And so in particular, X must be in both of these sets, so it must be in B. And so we've shown that A is a subset of B, because we've shown that a generic element of A is necessary, necessarily also an element of B. We've thus shown that A is a subset of B, which is what I wanted to show in this direction, and so that completes the proof.